Welcome to my sewing room. I am so excited about this show today and I've been looking forward to it for a long time. Today is the show on smocking. Yes, you're going to learn how to smock today. Smocking is one of my favorite things in the whole world to do. And I want to show you some of these beautiful examples of smocked clothes. This smocked dress, Susan York made this one, it is done on velveteen. The smocking is just right here on either side and it's used in combination with wonderful, absolutely beautiful uh, embroidery stitches, all the bullion, rosebuds, a beautiful combination, smocking and embroidery. Now smocking is just as pretty when done on printed fabrics. This particular smocking is geometric smocking. That's what we're going to learn today. See how pretty it is when stitched on geometric fabrics? This makes a very informal look. What a beautiful little smock dress for your daughter or your granddaughter or my granddaughters. I have four granddaughters that would love this little dress. This is geometric smocking and it's, by the way, the style is called a bishop. When it's a rounded style like this, and let me turn it around so you can see, it's smocked all the way around in the back. This is truly one of my favorite styles in the whole world and this little bishop uh, opens down the back. Just little sweet rosebuds and little pretty stitches. This is another one of my favorite dresses. Now this is also a bishop style. This bishop dress, here is the wonderful geometric smocking. This is done in a beautiful blue and this by the way is done on white linen, which is gorgeous. Now then, this is a bishop dress that is opened all the way down the front. There are many variations of bishops. I do want you to notice this gorgeous little uh, shadow work embroidered bows right here and right here. And there is a hand uh, scalloped or scalloped edge on the very edge of this dress. However, I do have a little secret. It doesn't have to be hand scalloping or scalloping. You can do it on the sewing machine. But isn't that a pretty way to finish the front of a dress? Let me turn it around so you can see the smocking that is right here on the back too. Beautiful, beautiful geometric smocking. Joanna loved her smock dresses when she was little, and my four granddaughters love their smock things that Nanny and Granny makes for them. Two of my granddaughters call me Nanny, and two of them call me Granny. So now then, you are getting ready to learn exactly how easy, and I promise you, Girl Scout honor, smocking is easy, and I'm going to share with you right now so you can start smocking also. The first stitch I'm going to share with you today is called the cable stitch. This illustration from my book, The Joy of Smocking, shows that you have an up cable, a down cable, an up cable, and a down cable. Let me show you how to do this. Here is the cable stitch as it looks after it is completed. It's just a beautiful straight line across. Let me show you what I'm going to follow along. Do you see those little stitches that are in there? This piece of fabric has been pleated with a pleating machine. All right, to begin the cable stitch, I come in on the left-hand side of the first pleat, then move over to the next pleat. I'm following the line. This will be a down cable. I have the uh, thread below the needle, so that is a down cable. The next stitch will be an up cable. As you see, I have the thread above the needle. By the way, I work with three strands of embroidery floss and a number eight cruel needle. When I get my stitches made, I take the tip of the needle and put them together. All right, I did a down and an up. Next, I'm going to do a down cable, which means the thread was below the needle. And next, I'm going to do an up cable, which means the thread is above the needle. See how simple and easy this is, and after you get a few stitches done. Now my needle is following straight along the line that has been run in by the pleater. That was a down. Here is an up with the needle a thread above the needle. That's an up cable. And remember, I kind of pushed the stitches together. All right, let's make another down. Now watch the needle. I simply let it go straight following the lines. I do not let the needle go up or the needle go down. It's much prettier stitching if you let the needle run straight along the lines when you make the stitches. That is the basic stitch on smocking. So very easy. Now the next stitch I'm going to go to is a variation of the cable. It's called the stem stitch. In this case, 
all of the stitches, I hold the thread below the needle. All right, here we go for the stem stitch. See, it looks kind of like a cable, a little bit like it, doesn't it? Where is the thread? Below the needle. All right, I'm going to continue right along this row of stitching. Okay, now look, when I want to tighten it, I pull up. Then I pull down. You know why? This is the stem stitch. And when I take each stitch, the thread is below the needle. All right, now here we go. I pull the thread down once again and take a stitch like this and the thread and I pull it up, pull it up to tighten and then pull it down because on the stem stitch I always let the thread be below the needle. The next stitch is called the outline stitch. Here is what the outline stitch looks like. It's very much like the cable except all the threads are above the needle. Let me continue stitching this one. Now you see my thread is above the needle, all right? I'm going to take that stitch right on that line that I've made with the pleater, then I'll pull it up. All right, I'm going to take another stitch right here, kind of straighten it a little bit each time, then pull it up. All right, now the outline stitch means the thread is above the needle, and then pull it down, and then pull it up to start again. That is the outline stitch. The next stitch I'm going to share with you is called a baby wave. This is the first of the stitches that start up and down. If you'll look at this little illustration from the Joyous Smocking, there is a cable at the bottom and a cable at the top. Let me just share with you how to do a wave or chevron stitch. It's also called a baby wave. All right, now that I'm at the bottom, I've made a cable stitch. I'm going to go from row to row. Can you see here's a row of pleating and here's a row of pleating. All right, I've made a down cable. Now to do a baby wave, I come all the way to the next line and make another down cable. Now pretend if you will, when you're going up and down, that this tail of the floss is a cat's tail. And if the cat is climbing stairs, where will the tail be? Down. If the cat is coming down the stairs, where will the tail be? pointed up. So that makes it really easy to remember whether the tail of the embroidery floss is down or up. That's a really important trick. Okay, a cable on the bottom. This is a chevron or a baby wave. Then I move to the top. Now remember the cat is going where? Up. So where will the tail be? Down. Okay, so therefore I'm making a down cable. Now the cat is at the top of the stairs and it has to turn around. So it's going to turn around with an up cable since it is at the top. All right, I make a turnaround cable. Now then, where is the cat going to be traveling this time? Down the stairs. So when the cat travels down, the tail is up. So as I come back down to the original line, I make an up cable because the tail of the cat is up. All right, now then I do a bottom turnaround. Since it's on the bottom, I'm going to do a bottom or a down cable. All right, so let me do a down cable to turn around. Okay, that's my turnaround stitch. All right, there's a cable. Now the cat is going up the stairs, so the tail will be down. I'll make a stitch right here. There we go. Then there's going to be a turnaround stitch at the top, so it will be a top turnaround stitch. There we go. Now the cat is traveling down, so there will be, the cat's tail will be where? As you can see, the thread represents the cat's tail, so the cat's tail is up, so I'll make a stitch at the bottom, and then I make another down cable to turn around. Now that is called a baby wave or chevron. Now then, you can make baby waves going from row to row, as you see right here, or you can make smaller baby waves simply going from half row, row to half row. That is a very simple stitch, and that's the first principle you hear me talking about, about the cat's tail going up and down. The next stitch that goes up and down I'd like to share with you is a two-step wave. Now count with me on this illustration, please, out of the joyous mocking. All right, there is a down cable, one, two, up cable, one, two, down cable. So when I say a two-step wave, there will be a cable at the bottom and a cable at the top and two waves or two steps in between. All right, let's see how this looks on the smocked piece. Are you with me now? All right, now then, uh, this particular stitch is going to be 
showing how to put the bottom of the cable together. We've got a two-step way. So let's travel down first, okay? All right, I have made my cable stitch there, my turnaround. So I will go um, one, and the cat is going down, so the tail was up. And then I will go two. The cat was coming down, so the tail was up. That's two steps, and then what do I do at the bottom? I do a turnaround cable at the bottom. Since it's at the bottom, the thread is down, so basically I do a down cable. All right, now that was my down cable. Now I'm going to go to the halfway mark and do another cable, and since the cat was going up, where is the tail? It was down. All right, there's one, and since the cat is going up, where is the tail again? It is down. That's two right up behind uh, at the bottom of that other cable. And then what do I have to do at the top before I can go down again? I have to do a turnaround stitch. Okay. And you see it makes a diamond. Okay, let's try that one again. Okay. All right, I did my turnaround. Now I'm going to the halfway point and doing a what kind of a cable? Do you see, since the needle is going down, pretend the cat is coming down the stairs, the needle is going down. Where is the cat's tail? It's up. So I leave the tail up. I do one stitch at the halfway point. Now, where is the cat going again? Still coming down the stairs. So where is the tail again on this next stitch? It is still up. All right, come down one, two. That's my two waves in the middle. Now I'm going to do what? When the cat is at the bottom of the stairs, before it goes up, it has to do what? Turn around. And since it is at the bottom of the stairs, where will the cat's tail be? Down. So I will make a down cable before the cat turns around to go back up. Now let's do this one more time. Okay, the cat is going up the stairs. So where does the tail go? Down. All right, I'll make the first stitch at the halfway point. Okay. And then that's one, and then the next stitch will come right here. I think you've got that. That is the going up and down. Now then, I have a three-step wave or trellis to show you. Count it with me, please. This is an illustration from The Joy of Smocking. Bottom cable, one, two, three. Top cable, one, two, three bottom cable. Let's go ahead and do this stitch. It's really very easy to do. All right, now I've just made my bottom cable to turn around. Now, since the cat is going up the stairs, what do I do? And by the way, for a three-step wave, I divide it. First of all, I do the first down cable at the one-third portion. I do the next down cable at the two-thirds portion. And I put the final down cable right here on the same line with my turnaround, okay? Now I've done three cables, so the cat is at the top of the stairs. What do I do? I do a turnaround, which is a top cable at the top of the stairs. All right, let's do it again. The cat is going down, so the tail is up. I make one stitch going down, pull the tail up again. I make another stitch coming down, pull the tail up one more time. I make my final stitch on the line, and then I'm ready to turn around. And that is absolutely the basics and the real, the real meat and potatoes of smocking. It is very easy to do. Just remember that cat climbing up the stairs so you'll know where the tail will go every time. This beautiful pillow has a smocked piece right down the middle. Would you look and see just how wonderfully we've used all kinds of smocking and decorative stitches. The smocking piece goes right down the middle. It's on silk dupioni. Then strips of purchased ribbon, machine stitches out of these wonderful new sewing machines, all kinds of glitter on this pillow, and yet it's very elegant glitter. Now, let me share with you exactly the pieces, exactly how this was made. First of all, start out with a solid piece of fabric. Okay. Then different strips are created. Here's the smock strip. Here's some more strips, which really were just fabric strips torn and surged on the edge with gold thread and laid down and you zigzag each one of them down. Now I'm gonna actually sew a little bit of this for you and show you how the piece was laid down on top of the smocked piece. Okay, 
Do you see this piece right here that's been surged on either side with gold thread? Let me hold it up and show you. The smocked piece was just simply laid right down on top of this beautiful forest green piece of fabric. It was laid down right there and it's been surged already. And now then, I have my sewing machine just on zigzag and I have the top thread in gold metallic and the bottom thread is simply in white. You don't need to, you don't need to have it any other, uh, you don't need to put gold on the bottom. You need just to have, just to have the gold on the top and the white on the bottom. And then I just simply, zigzag all the way down here and attach it and you just put the pieces on one after the other and it makes a perfectly beautiful pillow which is really terribly easy to make and so elegant. I have another really pretty smocked idea for you. You know our nightgown that we've been showing you during this series? Well here is a lovely silk batiste version of the nightgown. It has the pretty pretty shadow work embroidery on the bodice and look here, just right below the bodice is a little bit of smocking, very easy to do with just some little chevrons, three-step waves, and, and a little cable stitch. Really pretty and something for ladies to wear with smocking. How do you put this together? It's terribly easy to do. First of all, I'm gonna run the lines in on the pleating machine. Over here, I have drawn the armhole curve. You're gonna cut that out later because obviously you've gotta have an armhole in a nightgown. I've got my pleating threads in. I'm going to do my smocking across here. And this is something kind of cute. On the top piece here of this little shorty nightgown, I have just used a little machine decorative stitch. Not any handwork at all, just simply out of the machine. And you talk about an easy nightgown to make and fun, and sometimes people say, well, Martha, is smocking just for little girls and little boys? And I say, no, it is not. It's pretty for pillows, it's wonderful for ladies' nightgowns, all kinds of wonderful crafts and beautiful clothes, and wonderful pillows can be made using smocking. Speaking of smocked dresses, my little doll has the most beautiful peach smock dress to share with you, and that's coming right up. I think your doll will be very glad that you have had a smocking lesson today. Her dress is absolutely beautiful. This dress is so pretty, it's out of a peach fabric and it has ecru laces. The little high yoke dress, the smocking begins right below the high yoke and goes all the way down to her waist. This floss is over dyed floss or variegated floss and you can see it starts from the palest of peach and goes over to the darker peach. This smocking has the sweetest little um, bead, a little shiny bead right in the middle of those diamonds which you learned how to make a few minutes ago. Coming down her skirt, there is a very, very sweet fancy band that's terribly easy to make. It has entredeau, insertion, 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 entredeau, and gathered lace. Now, let me share with you how easy it is to put together this particular doll dress that your little doll, I believe, will really enjoy. A traditional little puff sleeve is the first section. You can see it's just a regular little sleeve with entredeau insertion. When you want to put gathered lace just to the bottom of insertion, as I have here, simply pull the string in the lace, butt it up to the insertion, and zigzag it. That's absolutely all you have to do. Now, the little fancy band, which I have made here, the fancy band, when you want to put entre, uh, gathered lace to the bottom of entredeau, you trim off the seam allowance of the entredeau, once again pull the string in the lace, butt it up, and zigzag it to the entredeau. This little dress, as you can see the variegated floss, goes from light to dark to light. It's awfully pretty, and you just simply attach it to the yoke like this, and you're ready to finish the rest of the dress. Now that you've seen my pretty little doll dress, I thought you might be glad to do a very, very different project. Let's go to the craft for today. This is a fast, 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 pretty, 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 and oh so easy project to make for yourself, for almost any room of your home, or for almost anyone on your gift list. This little pillow 
is made out of silk du peony. The colors here are just a wonderful deep red, almost a burgundy and black. You can see it has a really pretty top. I like the way the little button and the braid are on this tufted top, very Victorian looking. And the most exciting part of this little footstool is actually how easy it is to make. Now let me just move this one over and move in the pieces here so I can show you from the very beginning what, how you make this little footstool. A little purchase stool from the craft store is the beginning. Then this heavy batting, oh, three or four layers goes over that. You're going to need your staple gun so you can staple all of this down. The next layer is a straight piece of fabric, silk du peony. And how are those elegant gathers made? Oh, this is hard to do. Pull it together and put a rubber band around the middle. Put it around and then, and then staple that also. Then the double ruffle comes next. The double ruffle was once again folded down, stapled. After that is put down, then the beautiful braid is simply glued on. And then for the little uh, finish at the top, come around here with a fabric covered button and a little bit more of the black braid. Next, I have a really beautiful quilt square for you. My smocked quilt square is so easy to make. This is a really pretty square. It just has the little geometric smocking with little pearls in it, and you can see it has piping at the top and the bottom, and little added pieces on each side. That is really very easy to make. First of all, I have my smocked piece, as you can see right here, geometric smocking that you've learned how to do today. I have to add the little side pieces on either side of it, and then here is my piping, which has first been stitched down. Then after it's stitched down, I bring my fabric over it, pin it right at the edge of the smocking, straight stitch it, and voila, I hold it up, and that is how I got my piped smocked piece inserted in the middle of the quilt square. One of my favorite parts of the day is to take you into my attic and to share with you some wonderful trick or some wonderful costume, some wonderful dress out of my grandmother's trunk. <laughs> On a recent trip I made antique hunting through France, I found this really beautiful little boy dress. I'm pretty sure it's a boy dress simply because it just looks like a boy dress. And little boys in the late 1800s wore uh, dresses up until age five or six, dressed sort of like girls. There was the cutest little poem called Grandpa Wore a Dress, and I thought about that poem when I saw this boy dress. It's made out of a wonderful Swiss bouquet. It has really good looking and very tailored looking trim, Swiss trims, and this pretty collar. And it has a little uh, dicky that would come out of the front However, I think probably it was worn mostly attached in the front. And as you can see on the back, the good looking sailor collar, and there even are some little loops that you could run a belt through if you wanted to. Really wonderful clothing, and I'll tell you, I had a wonderful time in France looking for clothing to bring back for this television show. For our Sewing from the Heart segment, I have a letter from Kay Albright from the Memorial Parkway Church of Christ in Huntsville, Alabama. Kay writes, one August afternoon, our group of 28 ladies began creating and donating wonderful baby gowns to the Huntsville Hospital. In turn, the nurses, after ooing, smiling, eyes swelling up with tears and hugging and loving those gowns, passed them on to the parents of fragile newborns free of charge. The gowns go home on the baby or, in unfortunate cases, are used as burial gowns or as a memory that helps, the tiny, helps a tiny bit to help the pain go away. We can't serve all 600 of the babies that are in Huntsville Hospital neonatal ICU each year, but we plan to serve as many of them as we can. We are also enjoy working with Vicki, Bridget, Liz, and all the nurses at the hospital. Their enthusiasm, compliments, and sincere hearty thank yous are much more than encouraging to us. And Kay sends along with with her letter, one of these adorable little smocked nightgowns that the ladies there at Memorial Parkway Church of Christ, let me just turn it around, it's really cute, it ties here and it says on the little tag, it says made with loving hands by ladies from the Church of Christ. Isn't that the sweetest little smocked nightgown? And a lot of these go home on, on babies and, and 
a lot of them are used for, for babies that didn't make it, so the parents will have something to bury the babies in. Kay, thanks for sending this wonderful letter. Thank you for joining me in my sewing room today. I've had a lot of fun helping you learn how to smock. I hope to see you next time. Mm -hmm.